To reiterate, uh, this week we're continuing with the um, 10 a.m. class live and then posting that for sort of the evening class of the day. Uh, and my poor Ashtanga friends have really just sort of gotten the, um, the short end of the stick the last couple months. It seems like I missed um, more Ashtanga than I did anything else. So I'm going to do them a favor today and uh, teach them Ashtanga this morning. If you didn't know, uh, it is my my personal practice and my, oh, I hate to say favorite, right? Because I have no favorites when it comes to yoga, but um, it's, it's near and dear to my heart. And it's um, what my teachers practiced and taught and um, still do in many ways. Uh, their teaching lives on through so many great teachers that I've met. So... Um, I will always have a soft spot for Ashtanga in my heart. So we're going to do some Ashtanga yoga this morning. Don't be scared. Uh, sometimes Ashtanga gets sort of a, a bad rep for being really stern and hardcore and disciplined. And sometimes that's true. Depends on the school, depends on the teacher, uh, depends on the environment, right? Uh, I will tell you this much. I'm, I'm not a mean Ashtanga teacher. I'm uh, I'm all about putting forth your best effort and really making an honest um, try on your mat and then um, letting everything else just fall into place. Don't be so hard on yourself all the time. This is supposed to make you feel good. So with all that in mind, uh, I also want to put a disclaimer out there that Although we're going to do a very Ashtanga style class, this is not um, by any means a straightforward classical Ashtanga. This is going to be sort of Ashtanga inspired. Just for you purists out there, I don't want you to think uh, that I'm pushing off something um, <laughs> as Ashtanga that's not. Uh, you'll see a lot of familiar things if you're familiar with the sequen sequence, and if you're not, you're still going to be able to do um, pretty much everything that we do, and there's a modification for every posture, so please make sure that you pay attention to what you need, pay attention to what your body wants, and if you need to slow things down or change them up at any time, by all means, it's always okay to do so. All righty? Yay! So let's get going because we don't have um, a ton of time. So we're going to start out uh, on our feet for Ashtanga class. But before we come up there this morning, just press back, take a child's pose, make some sort of shape with your body here for a moment. doesn't really matter what you do, but just find a place that allows you to slow down your breath, to slow down your mind, and to simply just get centered. to make your best effort to let go whatever else is going on around you, whatever's coming up later, whatever already happened right now, you don't have to worry about any of that. Just let it go. Take a couple of deep grounding breaths. And then when you feel ready to move around a little bit, hello, welcome everybody just joining in. Take your time, maybe stretch back to a down dog for a second, or you can just really walk yourself right to your feet because that is where we start an Ashtanga class is up on our feet. So quick breath or two in a forward fold. 
Just checking in with the body this morning. How do you feel? What do you feel? Try not to make any judgments or comparisons or set any expectations. Just notice what's happening. Simply observe. and stand tall. I'm going to back up a little bit here, but you can start right there at the top of your mat. So we always begin the practice of Ashtanga Yoga in Samastitihi, standing up, equal standing posture, two feet rooted, all ten toes pressed down, palms to heart center here, or you can relax your hands at your sides either way. And then there is an opening chant for every Ashtanga practice. And if you know this chant, it's called Vande Guru Nam. You're welcome to chant it with me. Otherwise, you can just listen. Essentially, this is a, a little blessing for the practice and a shout out um, to all those who have practiced before us. Om. Vande Guru Nam Charanara Vinde Sandar Shita Svat Masukava Bode Nishreya Se Jangalakaya Mane Samsara Hala Halamu Ashyantai Abahu Purushakaram Shanga Chakra Siddharinam Sahasra Shirasham Sitam Pranamami Patanjali. And hands at your side as you exhale. Good. If you're interested in learning that chant, look it up. It's on the Northeast Yoga YouTube channel. There's a whole session devoted to teaching you that particular chant. When you're ready, arms come up overhead. Inhale, reach up, stretch up. Exhale, fold. So we start with some sun salutations. Half lift and lengthen, draw the navel up and in. Step, walk, or hop. You'll notice I'm gonna have to walk forward a little bit, but you can probably just step your feet back and from the top of a push-up, lower down on your exhalation. Chaturanga, you can go all the way or halfway. Urdhamukha, Bhujangasana, up dog or cobra, either one. And take it back, downward facing dog. You get five breaths in down dog, to just simply breathe, relax, soften up the neck, the shoulders, the jaw. We're always focused on the breath. Any good Ashtanga practice, most of the time it will be impossible to forget to breathe because eventually I'm going to start counting your breaths for you here. So we'll say that's three. Tuck your chin, look up for your navel. That's the gaze point of down dog. Nabi Drishti, looking for your belly button. Four. And five. Take a look forward, step, walk, or hop up to the top of your mat and half lift. Lengthen on the exhale, we'll fold. Bring it all the way to the top, sweep the arms up. And then hands back at your sides. There you go. All right. So that was 10 movements. I'm going to count them for you this time. Same 10 movements again, connected to the breath. Inhale, reach up on one. In Sanskrit, that's ekam. Fold forward, dve is two. Trini, half lift is three. Chatvari, step walker, hop back and lower on four. Ancha, inhale, five is your back bend, up dog or cobra, and shop, take it back, downward facing dog. And stay right there and breathe, five breaths. Don't mind me, I'm just gonna make a little camera adjustment here. One. Two. There we go. Three. Smooth, steady breathing. Four. You're going to pull all the muscles behind and below your navel, slightly up and in. Engage your bandhas here. One more exhale. 
five. Take a look forward, step walk. Hop to the top and lengthen. Sata, that's seven. Ashtau, eight, we fold again. Nava, nine, you're gonna come all the way up to stand. And Dasha, 10, hands at your sides. We'll do one more of those. Surya Namaskara A. Ekam. Dve. Rini. Chadvari. Ease is up and in. Breath is smooth and steady. Center of the body is strong. Three, four, five. Sapta, back to the top and lengthen on the same breath. Ashtal, fold. Nava, bring it all the way up to the top, palms press. Dasha, hands at your sides. All right. Surya Namaskara B. Now we're going to do a couple rounds of the second sun salutation. We'll go slowly through. We're just going to do two rounds today. That's pretty much all we have time for, and that's okay. You'll get the hang of it on the first one, Utkatasana. We start with fierce pose. Bend the knees, press the palms together, gaze to your thumbs, inhale. On your exhale, you fold. Half lift and lengthen again. Three knee. On Chatvari, step, walk, or hop. Remember, on four, we take it down through Chaturanga Dandasana. Urdha Mukha, inhale. There's your up dog or cobra. Exhale back to downward facing dog. Take a look forward. Now your right foot steps through your hands. Maybe it takes you a couple steps to get there. No problem. Back heel spins flat, and you rise for warrior one. Remember, warrior one pose is squared to the front of your mat, not open to the side. That's warrior two. So first position warrior, palms to press if you can. Gaze up, Vira Bhadrasana. On the exhalation, hands down. Take another vinyasa here, or you can skip it and just go to down dog. This starts to add up a little too much in your shoulders. Do what seems appropriate for you. From down dog, left side now. Left foot steps up. Back heel comes down. Good. Shoulders stacked over the hips. As you rise, make warrior one. Pull the low belly muscles up and in. Exhale, hands come back. And again, lower. Halfway or all the way. Chaturanga. Up dog or cobra. Notice that when we pull through to up dog, it's really just a push up. Try to get out of the habit of swooping and scooping there, right? Just straight down, straight up. Good, back to downward facing dog. Hold your five breaths right here. One. Soften your forehead, relax your jaw, two. Can you loosen up the back of your neck a little bit? Try to relax your heels, three. Four, and five. Here we go, back to the top, step or hop. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Good, exhale, fold. Knees bend, sit back, same pose you started with. Utkatasana, fierce pose. And then stand tall and exhale. All right, just like in Sun A, there's a count that goes with it. It's 18 movements. This time I'm just gonna count for you. Do your best to keep up. Ekam, inhale, one, reach up. Dve, exhale, fold on two. Three, knee, lengthen halfway, three. Chatvari, step, walk, or hop back, and lower on four. Pancha, inhale, lift on five. Shop, hips back on six, that's down dog. Sapta, right foot steps, warrior one, all the way up on a big breath. At seven, Ashtau, eight is back to Chaturanga. Nava, nine is an up dog cobra. Exhale, Dasha, ten is down dog. Left side now. Eka, Dasha, eleven, all the way up. 
Dvadasha, 12, all the way back down. It's a lot of movement right away, I know. Trayodasha, 13, back bend. Chaturdasha, 14 is down dog, breathe. With me right here, one. Bandha's engaged, two. Smooth, steady breathing. Three. Gazes at the navel, Navi Drishi. Four. And five. Pancharasha, 15. Step, walk, or hop to the top and lengthen halfway up. It's a lot on one breath. Shudasha, 16, fold. Satarasha, knees bend, reach up, inhale. Utkatasana on 17. Ashtadasha, stand it up. There's 18 movements. Okay. Usually in Ashtanga class, I would not say stop for a coffee break, but who fucking cares? Do what you want to do. I'm not done drinking coffee yet today. Feet come apart when you're ready, right there at the top of your mat. Here we go. All right, so we're done with the movement part for now. We'll see another one of those later. But we're gonna start now with some standing postures. And the first thing you do is take your feet apart and then you're gonna fold down. It doesn't matter if you bend your knees or not. Who, nobody cares about that. Just make sure that you're in a good, comfortable forward fold, that your head is below your heart. First two fingers and your thumbs are gonna make a mudra, a circuit around your big toes. So if you can get a hold and bend your knees as much as you need to, exhale, let your elbows just relax to the side. Look back through your legs rather than down at your mat and enjoy a forward fold. Five breaths. Two. Three. Four. Inhale, take a look forward, stretch your back. On your exhale, you'll release, and now you're gonna switch your hands. See if you can slide your hands underneath, palms up, until your toes meet the crease of your wrist. If you can't get that far under, it's okay. Just do your best, and then same thing again. Soften at your elbows, relax your shoulders, get some traction in your back here. Don't worry about your legs. Over time, you'll work on lifting your tailbone, taking a little bend out of the knees. One breath at a time, one thing at a time here. Two. It is always more important that you feel steady and joyful in your posture than anything else, right? So if you feel like you can relax a little bit and you still feel confident and calm, that's a good indication that you're right where you need to be. Four and five. Inhale, take a look forward. On your exhale release, hands come to your hips. Don't be afraid to bend the knees and inhale, rise up. Good, and then hop your feet together. Okay, we're gonna start some postures now where we step open to the side. And in order for you to see that, I have to change my mat, but you don't need to. You can stay where you're at. All right, so you're at the top of the mat and you're always gonna step back with your right foot first. So in that case here, I would step back with my right and then I'm gonna pivot my feet around so that now you're facing the back of the mat and your right leg is leading the way. Take a moment, figure that out in your brain. There you go. And then we begin with triangle pose. So, Uttita Trikonasana. Take a moment here to set up your first triangle. Again, if this knee needs to bend considerably, it's okay. You just need to make sure that you're taking care of your body, right? Reach as far down as you can without collapsing. So make sure that you can keep a little lift going in your upper body here. Good. Everybody's stance is gonna be a little bit different. If you can very easily get your bottom foot, then you can take your big toe, but don't worry too much about that. Just do your best. Pay attention to the stretch right here. 
this nice big side body stretch, particularly over the top of your left hip. Three. Firm up from the inside out. Use your bandhas. Four and five. Come on up with me on the inhale. Again, if you need to bend the knee, always prefer that you would do that rather than lock out, right? Take it down on the other side. Now you notice on this side, I'm not going quite as deep. That's just because I have a little hamstring injury and I'm gonna take care of that today. So I'm gonna stay up a little bit higher. Make sure that I'm pulling all that energy from the center of my body up and in. Bandha's engage, still breathing. Four and five. Inhale, bring yourself up. Parivrita, Trikonasana. Parivrita means revolving or turning around is the literal definition. So we're gonna switch the feet again. You're gonna go back to your right leg leading. And then we're gonna turn or revolve the pose, meaning we're gonna put a little twist now, if you can take this posture, no problem with your hand on the ground and rotate, great. Otherwise, if you have a block or something nearby that you could use here to kind of bring the floor up to you, go for it. Another option would be to just bend that front knee pretty deeply and rotate from there. All right, so you do what works best for you. Got to really focus on your exhales here with the twist. Three four, and five. Let's bring it up. Inhale slowly. You move your feet around. To the back side now. Vanna just means left side or other side. Right hand comes down. Left arm reaches up. Again, you're gonna see me do a little bit of some modifying on this side just to take care of a few tender spots and you are welcome to do the same. Three, four, and five. Inhale, come all the way up, stretch your arms out as long as you can be on your mat, and then step back to the top. Samasthiti. Good. All right, let's do it again. New pose. Parshva Konasana. Right foot steps you back, then you pivot. Arms come out like warrior two, and on your exhale, you're gonna take it down for side angle pose. Now, if this is a new posture for you, just put your elbow right there on your thigh. Make sure that you could pick that elbow up so that you know you're using the strength of your body and stay put. If this is an old pose for you, then you probably know in Ashtanga, we're gonna reach for the outer edge, the pinky edge of your foot, and your left arm's gonna stretch way out here, up and over, Okay, right? Gaze goes to your fingertips. I'm in my tiny front porch, so I don't have a ton of room. So I'm gonna slightly scooch back a little bit so that I can reach, good. And then breathe, three, four, five. Bring it up, switch the feet, right there. Again, I'm doing some extra scooching just to stay in the frame of the camera. Once you've got the shape of the pose, you can reach out as long as you'd like, or you're welcome to just keep a little bit of lift in the upper body. One. Breath, bandhas, rishti, right? We're always gonna come back to that. Are you breathing smooth and steady? Two. Are you engaged behind and below your navel? Three, where's the gaze? In this point, technically, you're looking out to your fingertips or to the tip of the hand. Hastagra drishti. Four and five. Inhale, slowly bring it up. Parivrita, parashvakonasana. Remember, parivrita means revolved. So switch back to your right side. And if you're going to go for the full pose here, scoot out a little bit. You're gonna just try to hook this elbow all the way across and revolve. If that's a little bit much or this is a new pose for you, come with me. We're gonna go down onto the back knee. We'll stay right there and then we'll hook our twist and revolve so that we're still getting all of the spinal benefits. We don't have to worry so much about the balance or using the legs. 
We're still getting the twist. Two, three, four, five. Slowly unwind. If you're down on your back knee, careful with the transition. Come all the way up, then switch. Same thing. Pivot to the left. Drop down to the knee. If you're staying off your knee, then the back foot's going to try to maintain that flat edge position like a warrior one foot, right? Cross. Right elbow as far to the outside of the left knee as you can. And breathe here. <clears throat> one. So in vinyasa class, they would call this prayer twist pose, right? Two. But it's nice to know that the word parivrita means revolving, so that it keeps you thinking about this process of revolving, that the pose is constantly turning, and that it's not just a twist and then you stop, right? Keep the exhale coming with the rotation. Four, and five. Slowly unwind, inhale, open up, and then just stay with me right here. Reset your feet a little bit if you need to, if you feel like you're too wide in your stance, and bring your hands onto your hips. And we're gonna go right into the next part, which is a couple of wide leg forward folds, and we're just gonna do a few of them. Inhale, go ahead, take a look up. Try not to take a huge back bend, but just lift your gaze. And then on your exhale, come forward, put your hands on the floor. Good. You know, line up your fingers with your toes the best you can and take another breath right there. Check those bandhas. Everything active, everything engaged. Now on your exhale, fold a little deeper. Just let your elbows comfortably bend. Knees can bend as much as they need to. Head down below the heart. Prasarita Padutanasana. One. Two. Three. I apologize. Sometimes my neighborhood is not allowed, so <laughs> uh, we'll work with it. But it feels so good to have the breeze blowing through the porch today that I, I can't bring myself to shut the windows. Four and five. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale here, make sure you're ready to rise, soften the knees, hands on your hips, come all the way back up to stand tall, and exhale there. All right, reset the feet again. If you feel like you're sliding out, make sure you're steady. We'll do one more. Baddha Hasta variation. Baddha means bound, hastas are your hands. So we're gonna bind the hands. On the inhale, you take the arms out, that's ekam. On dve, second movement, hands go behind the back. Three knee, lock the fingers, pull your heart center up and your navel back and in, and then all the way down, Anjavari. Four takes you into the shoulder stretch and you just hang upside down. Again, don't look down or forward, look back through your legs, slightly up so that your neck stays nice and long. Two, try not to force the shoulders into anything here, just let gravity do the work for you. Three. Core is still strong. Four. And five. Slowly on your inhale, rise all the way up to the top. And exhale, release. All right, step it back to the top. We're going to do one more thing here. Parajvotanasana. Same movement as before. Step back with your right foot. Pivot around. Now right here. You're facing the back of your mat, right? With your right foot out. Look down at your feet. Should be like if you were gonna take, if someone said, Simon says, take a great big step forward, right? So it's a little bit bigger than your natural stride. There are some fancy arm positions you can do here. And if you know those arm positions, go for it. You can make reverse namaste, flipping your hands on your back. You can take your elbows or your forearms. But if you're not comfortable with that, or you just tend to have a little bit of um, balance challenge in your life, then keep your hands on your hips all the way down as far as you can. And then when you get to the bottom, if you feel like you need to put your hands on the ground, put your 
There we go. And breathe. I'll do hands on the ground version today. If your hands are behind your back, then you're really using your core strength. Two, three, four, and five. Slowly we'll come up. Don't be afraid to bend your right knee as you rise. Pivot around. Inhale, lengthen. Good. Exhale, forward and down again. Hands can find the ground, hands can be on the hips, or hands can be behind your back. Good. Watch what happens to your hips here. Try not to let everything kind of spin over to the left side. Keep working on squaring the hips and shoulders. Two. Three. Four. And five. Hands on your hips. Inhale. Rise up slowly. Good. Pivot around to the side. All right. Stretch your arms out and then just step your feet together. You'll go back to the top of your mat. You guys stay right where you're at. I'm going to spin back around this way now. All right, usually there's a balance sequence that goes here, but I'd really like to get you guys down for some of the seated postures before we run out of time. So we're gonna skip the balancing and we'll just go back to the beginning and start with a sun salutation. We'll just do one sun A. This will get us down to the mat. We're gonna skip a few things here. Ikam inhale, reach up. Three, exhale, fold. Three, knee length and halfway. Chatvari, step, walk or hop back and lower down when you're ready. Elbows stay tight to your ribs. Good. Pancha inhale. Remember up dog or cobra and take it back. Downward facing dog. Now, like I said, usually there's a, another sequence that happens here, but today it's okay. We're going to delete that and just come through to a seated position. Good. Get yourself comfortable. And we begin with a posture called Dandasana. And in this pose, you're going to pull your chin into your chest. A danda is a staff or a stick, you know, so think about being really rigid. Chin pulls in, navel pulls back, root lock, mula bandha. We're talking about all those little muscles below your belly button, right down to the root of your body, pull up and in. Press your hands flat into the mat if you can and flex your toes back towards your nose. Breathe. Get yourself grounded, rooted. Three, four, and five. Inhale, lift your gaze. Good. Paschimottanasana. We're going to come forward and do a couple of forward folds. The first position we're asked for in Ashtanga is to put your first two fingers and your thumbs, <coughs> excuse me, around your big toes again. Uh, we've made this position once already. Remember when we did that at the beginning in our standing forward fold. If that's a little out of reach, just put your hands as far down your legs as you can comfortably go. No problem. On the exhalation, you're gonna fold. Don't mind me, I'm just making a quick hair change. There we go. Two. Resist the urge to really wanna pull and stretch. Instead, just find a place that's good for you to start and then try to relax with each exhale. Right. Three. Four, five. Inhale, lift up a little bit. Really good. Second one, you can go over the top of your feet from the edge. This is traditional version or B version. Or you can go C version, which is all the way around your feet. If you're a little bit bendier person, you might be able to just go right into that. Otherwise, Maybe you just want to repeat a second set of A. 
Makes no difference to me. You do what's right for you. Fold. One. Stretch your back here. Two. I know it's hard to think about anything other than your hamstrings, but see if you can bring a little length into the spine. Three. Four. Five. Inhale. Three. Sit up tall. Good. On your exhale, usually we would vinyasa here, but today we're going to do one more thing. We're going to put the hands behind the back and go right to Purvatanasana, which is the opposite of a forward fold. You can point your toes, lean back into flat palms, and work on lifting your whole body to reverse plank, or you can bend at the knees, put your feet down, and lift from there. Either one. So again, I'm taking some modifications today just to show them off and you're welcome to come with me if you want. Reverse tabletop or plank. Purva Tanasana. For two. Keep breathing. Three. Four. And five. We lower all the way down and then right here you're going to start seeing the option to take what's called a half vinyasa, art of vinyasa. It's just the bottom half, sort of business end of a sun salutation. So you tuck the ankles through, step, walk, or hop back, and you just do this part right here. If you don't want to do that, I'll give you some other options when it comes up again next time. Step, walk, or hop, right back through to a seat. Good. All right, and then we're going to go a couple postures Skip a few and go right to Janu Shirshasana. <clears throat> right knee is open to the side. Left leg is out nice and long. This should look like a seated tree pose, essentially. As far down that left side as you can go, comfortably, and inhale. Lengthen. On your exhale, fold. Good. Relax the muscles of your face. Neck and jaw, no need for that stuff to be really tight here. I'm just going to try to get those shoulders down from the ears. Make some little movements if you need to. What I want you to pay more attention to is the stretch in the right side of your low back. If you're not getting much, lift up a little bit, twist ever so slightly like you're putting your belly button in the center of your left thigh, and then come back in. These five breaths are going to be a little bit longer just because this is my favorite pose. And so we stay just a tad longer here. If you can very easily get your foot, then the next thing you try to do in this posture is to reach your right hand for your left wrist on the outside and maybe just pull back a little bit. Certainly not necessary or required. Just an option. Four and five. Inhale. Okay, if you want to take a half vinyasa, cross your ankles, plant your hands, jump back and move through Chaturanga. If you don't, here's some other options. You can sit in Nandasana, just like we did before for a moment. Reset your spine. You can cross your ankles, plant your hands, try to lift your butt up, Lulasana. Or, this one's a little bit untraditional, but I say, hey, why not get stronger? Maybe you take a little Navasana, a little boat pose in between your postures, so that you're still strengthening your body in some way. This lifting thing is hard on most people's shoulders, so there's options for you, okay? If you want to create your own little thing that you do between poses, cool. You do you. Eventually, we're all going to get back through to a seat, and then we'll do the other side. Vamma. Left knee open now, right leg is long. Make that little turn so that it should feel, there you go, like your belly button's aiming for the center of your right thigh. Come forward, find your grip, breathe, and then relax. Yes, 
So last spring, I went out to the desert and uh, did a couple days with David Swenson. And if you don't know who that is, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> unless you're an Ashtanga person, you might not know. But um, he's, a, he's a pretty famous Ashtanga yoga teacher. Um, and he's really funny and really relatable. And uh, I kind of gravitate toward his teaching because he teaches a little bit like I do, where he's not so concerned about the particulars. And the one thing that he said over and over and over again that resonated with me was we'd get in the pose and then he'd say, deep breath in, now activate where necessary, relax wherever possible. So close your eyes for a moment and just activate where it feels necessary to do so. Yeah. Bottom does engage, just a little bit. You can tell the parts of your body that need some support and then soften everything else that doesn't need to work so hard. So that you're creating that support, that stira, and that you're also getting the relaxation, sukham. We said at the beginning that if it felt steady and joyful, then it was right where we should be, right? Four and five. Inhale. Up a little bit. Good. Okay, your choice. Chaturanga, Lolasana, Navasana, Dandasana. Lots of different options for you. Right. Step, walk, or jump back through to another seat. Okay, again, we're skipping a bunch of stuff here and we're going on to a new pose. We're going to do a twist. This posture is called Marityasana C. Um, it's just because it's the third or the C version. Usually we do four of them today. We're just doing one of them. And it's just a simple seated twist. You're gonna bring your left elbow around to hug this knee in. If you want, you can hook your elbow to the outside. If you know this pose, you love it, and you also are a binder, you know that there is a bind that goes around this leg. Not necessary, optional. What is necessary is that you breathe. So sit up nice and tall, inhale, activate where it's necessary, relax wherever possible. Good, twist again. One. Two. Three. Four, five. Gaze around to the front. Deep breath in. Good. Your choice, Chaturanga, Lolasana, Dandasana. I really like to just sit in Dandasana between the sides of my twist. It helps me um, feel like I really reset my back. And so you're welcome to just do this one if you want. And then draw that left knee in. And if you're moving through, you'll join us when you're ready. Uh -huh. Right knee, or pardon, right elbow to the outside of the left knee, or you can just hook it, pull it in nice and tight. Sit up tall. If you can get your left palm flat behind you, try to work with a flat palm and then exhale, work the rotation. One. Two. Keep your right foot alive, give it a little flex. Three. Four. Five. Inhale, gaze forward. Good. Exhale. Chaturanga, Lulasana, Dandasana, Navasana. Okay. Step, walk, or jump through to a seat. Okay. We're gonna do a little bit of core work here. Um, there are usually five sets of Navasana pose. Today, we are just gonna do three of the five. If you're familiar with boat, um, you can just start with the legs up, arms out. I'm gonna turn to the side just for your benefit so that you don't have to look right at my feet and my butt. <laughs> Uh, what you want to avoid is this, right? You don't want to do this posture with a rounded back. You want to sit up as tall as you can, really 
Work to lengthen. If that's too much, bend your knees, draw them in close, hold on to them if you need to, or set your heels down, and then work with a flat back, all right? Join me when you're ready. One, two, three, four, five. Cross your ankles, plant your hands, just try. Even if nothing lifts, just try to lift something off the ground. It doesn't matter if your feet come up or not. Good, set it back down, do it again. One, two, three. Remember you can be right here. Four and five. Push, flat palms, lift and release. One more time. Feel how your low belly muscles really come to life. One, lots of places to do your boat. Don't be afraid to try. What's right for you? Three, four, and five. Lift, set it back down. Vinyasa if you want, or just put the bottoms of your feet together and meet me here. Okay, I apologize. I have to come close to you guys for a minute and check what time it is on my phone. Okay, because there's no clock out here in my porch. So we've only got 10 minutes left, which means that's cool. We'll get down to business on a couple finishing postures here. Put the bottoms of your feet together. Find Baddha Konasana. You're gonna open your feet up a little bit like you would open a book. Just take a nice deep breath in. I wanted to make sure we got this posture in because I did have a request for some low back work and you get a lot of it in Ashtanga class, but this pose I think is everybody's favorite low back stretch. So come forward with as flat of a back as you can for the first few moments here. And just notice how it feels to lead with your collarbones. Elbows stay tucked in. You can use those elbows to help you and then open up the creases of the hips a little bit. Good. And then sit up tall once more. And now round in and do about five more breaths. Chin to your chest lead with the crown of your head down and then you can really stretch a little bit deeper into your lumbar spine here so tuck the chin think about setting the crown of your head down on the ground in front of your toes one day even if it's not in this lifetime it's just a good direction to move toward three four and five. Okay, come on up. And let's just take the legs out. We're gonna roll down onto our backs. Again, I'm gonna make a slight adjustment. You stay put, turn to the side. All right, rolling down onto your back. When you get there, give your knees a quick squeeze and then set your feet down on the mat. Setu Bandasana, we'll do bridge pose. I'm gonna say bridge pose twice, but if you'd like to make the second back bend a full upward bow, a full back bend off the mat, you're welcome to do so. I'm gonna do two bridges today. So you'll take the second one on your own if that's what you're gonna do. Walk your heels in a little bit closer to your glutes. On the inhale, push your hips up just as far as they'll comfortably go here at first. And then maybe if you've got a little bit more room, to walk your shoulder blades in underneath, press through stronger feet, feel free. None of that is necessary. You can just support your hips if you need to or let your hands relax. However, you do wanna keep a little activation between your inner thighs. So even though your thighs are slightly apart, imagine what it would feel like to squeeze them together. And at the same time, relax a little bit of tension from your glutes. Two, three, four, and five. Take it down all the way onto your back. Go ahead, untuck your shoulder blades for a second. Just feel a good flat spine on the ground. Push your hands into your thighs, your thighs into your hands if you need some help with lengthening your back. There we go. All right, second set. Here we go. Situ Bandhasana. Bridge pose again. Hips up high or hands next to the ears and you can push all the way up to full back bend. 
you can really get in, get those hips up, support them, then you might be able to lock your fingers and stretch them back down toward the ground. One, two, three, four, five. Unhook your hands, lower yourself all the way back down. Once you're on the ground, flatten out the spine. All right, let's just bring the legs up straight to 90 degrees. So if you know that rolling backward and doing plow and shoulder stand is not good for you, it doesn't work for your neck or for any other reason, you just don't wanna be upside down today, you'll stay right here. Just pretend like you've got your legs right up the wall, straight up at 90 degrees. Close your eyes, take a few deep breaths. If you do wanna roll backward, um, I'm gonna have to scooch just a little bit here. Then you'll roll those toes all the way back behind your head, right? Find your plow first. Put your hands at your low back. And if you know that you need to stay here, stay here. Otherwise, ah, <laughs> take it up to shoulder stand and work on stacking up. I am talking to you with my head turned. Please don't turn your head. If at all possible, just listen. Imagine in your eye or in your mind without your eyes what it would feel like to get your heels stacked over your hips and your hips over your shoulders. If you're still in plow pose, you can stay there. And those of you who are down on your back, keep breathing. We don't have a ton of time here, so we're just going to stay for another five, four, three, two, and one. If you're in shoulder stand, take it down to plow, stay there for a moment. If you're on your back, take your knees apart, bend them, pull them up and in towards your armpits. Hold that for a second. Plow pose. You guys, drop your knees around your ears. If you're on your back, Knees are already outside your ribs. Kick up your feet, grab them from the outer edge. Take happy baby. Three, four, and five. If you're still upside down, you're going to roll down slowly. Meet up with us on our back. Everybody let those feet go. Once you're flat on your back, bring your knees in, give them a quick squeeze. Usually we would do fish pose here. We're gonna skip that today. If you really wanna do it, go for it. You can catch up with us. Give yourself a couple rocks and then rock up to a seat. Once you're upright in a seated position, if you comfortably and regularly make lotus pose, make lotus pose. If you don't, you never have before, maybe don't start today. If you make half lotus and you just wanna try one foot on top, great. Technically, right, left. But if you're opposite and you have to go the other way, go the other way. If you don't do this pose, then just sit cross-legged, no problem. Right arm, left arm around behind. If you can't find feet right here, no problem. Take a hold of your elbows or your forearms. Inhale, come forward with me for a quick bow down. Again, usually we would stay with that a little bit longer today. We're just gonna give it a good solid exhale or two and then rise back up slowly. Keep your legs, release your arms, turn your palms up, draw your first finger and your thumb together. Let your gaze fall softly down towards your heart. Maybe the eyes are just almost closed. And work to slow your breathing all the way back down. 
A nice, easy, natural breath in and out. Put your gaze back up, take a deep breath in, plant your hands right outside your hips. If you can lift anything off the mat, try to lift it up right here and hold it. Last five. There's two, three, four, and five. Lower yourself down. One final vinyasa, here it is. If you're in lotus, you can do kind of a fancy lotus exit out the back. Otherwise, just untangle your legs. No big deal, step back, lower down, pull through up dog, and back to your final downward facing dog of the day. And then jump on through and grab whatever you might need to get comfortable for Shavasana. And that's all that's left is to get your body down and relaxed on your mat. Any place is good if you are lucky enough to have a wall nearby and you want to throw your legs up the wall or get some props involved, feel free. I'm going to let you guys get settled into Shavasana and I'll do the closing mantra for you and then I'll let you stay and relax there for as long as you'd like today and I'm going to take my Shavasana too. But let's make sure we get the closing blessing. So um, all of last week, the week before, and this week so far, I've been trying to include this chant wherever possible. It is called the Mangala Mantra. And um, it is the customary closing chant for an Ashtanga practice, but it really should, should be, could be the customary closing chant for any yoga practice, any chanting practice, any meditation practice. It simply means that more or less we be protected, that those who have chosen to lead us, lead us in the right direction, that the work that we do have some sort of positive influence um, on not just our own lives and practices, but of the world around us, and that all beings everywhere should be happy and free from suffering. So that's the closing chant. You feel free to listen, or if you're already resting in Shavasana and you want to chant along, always okay to join in. This one is also on the YouTube channel if you want to learn it. Give yourself something new to think about. Om Svasti Prajapya Paripalayantam